Although I'm a visual artist and I could just talk about the digital artwork and animations I create, I wanted to take this rare opportunity to talk to you all about mental health. And to me, it's rare because we don't usually hear about mental health from black male voices. So I'm here to tell you that this is something that actually affects all of us and deserves our attention. In fact, depression is the leading cause of disability in the US among people ages 15 to 44. Now what that tells me is that as we are growing and becoming adults, that our relationship with ourselves, the love for ourselves, isn't fortified enough for us to be able to withstand the adversity we're seeing. We are losing our abilities, and our, abil and our abilities are our powers, our magic. And if you've seen any superhero movie, you know that when the hero loses his or her powers, that we are in big trouble. So how do we get our powers back when we lose them? How do we maintain our magic through mental torment? In order to answer that, I want to share a story with you all of how I went from falling to flying. So my senior year of college, a time where I was supposed to be stepping towards a bright future, I was having the darkest moment of my life. I was cracking under the pressure of becoming an adult, and it didn't help that I lacked a vision or plan for myself. See, I knew what I wanted to do in terms of making art, but I didn't know who I wanted to become. I didn't have a grip on what my purpose was and why I'm here. On top of that, I had went through a major breakup, and I was forced to realize that for a long time, I had given more love to others than I had ever given to myself. And my self-confidence and self-image suffered as a result. Statistics show that globally, there are more than 300 million people of all ages who feel the same way that I did. Now, that situation or circumstance may be different from mine's, but I feel we all reach a point in our growing process where we feel stuck on the ground. So one of the first things I started doing was addressing the shallow vision I had for and of myself. I needed to truly believe I can fly, so I began to recondition my mind for magic. You know, we all need to believe how to fly, and in order to do that, we may have to go back to a time where life was much more simple. See, children, children genuinely believe they can fly. They believe in the impossible. They believe in themselves because they haven't yet been weighed down by the no-you-can'ts of life. For example, I have a four-year-old daughter. And, <laughs> and one of the most important and cutest activities I can do with her is affirmations. I am powerful. I am beautiful. I am magical. I am gifted. I am blessed. I make her say these things over and over again with confidence and conviction. And I can really see how empowered she feels afterwards. And it's because what she says about herself is ultimately way more powerful than anything anyone else can say about her. So the same way I nurture her magic, I had to nurture my own. I had to tell myself over and over again, I am powerful, I am beautiful, I am magical, I am gifted, I am blessed. And through that affirming, I was able to expand my sense of possibilities. I was able to start dreaming far and wide instead of being limited by my own disbelief. And that's why my artwork is so supernatural and otherworldly. It's because my creativity is drawn from that ingrained deep belief in the impossible. So self-confidence and self-empowerment were the wings I needed to fly. Now I needed self-love to fuel my flight. One of the first things I started doing was, I made it a habit to ask myself, what would somebody that loves themselves do? And I suggest we all try that, because it's that intention that allowed me to eliminate any habits that weren't serving me. I stopped going places, listening to music, and hanging around people that just didn't make me feel good or didn't add to my progression. I became a protector of my energy. I started investing into self-care and things like nutrition, exercise, and meditation became more important to me than they ever were. I became more in tune with my soul because when we give ourselves love, we are also serving our spirit. And day by day, I started seeing a total transformation in my way of life. And it felt so good feeling myself grow that I actually forgave myself and was able to appreciate rock bottom for igniting my passion. My artwork had become more than just a call to believe in the impossible, but an opportunity to stress the importance of self-love 
and how it healed me. I had truly found my purpose, and I have been living in it ever since. And I want to continue to share and spread these messages of self-love and self-empowerment because even though it is a simple solution, it is, in my opinion, more effective than any medication. We are living in a society where we're losing just as many people to suicide as we are to breast cancer. And no pill will work when we don't do the work on ourselves. And even if you aren't depressed, these are the tools we all can use as we move forward and face the unforeseen and unpredictable adversities of the future. We all need this unconditional love for ourselves in order to, so that we can spread that love to the world. We all need that unwavering belief in ourselves in order to make the impossible possible. We all need to know how to fly. Thank you. <laughs>